the first time I saw it, it was the second film I'd ever seen, first one being The Spy Who Loved Me. <laughs> um, and uh, it completely blew my mind when I was a child um, on lots of different levels. The, the aliens thing became a little bit of an obsession with me. Uh, I spent the rest of, I still do draw those figures. If I'm sitting at home, it's something I doodle a lot. Um, uh, and I, I even bought the, the trashy book that went with it that, that all the kids were buying, which was basically a rewrite of the script into a story. And there was one sequence in particular where they, some weird bit what they put in where um, they fabricated that they'd stolen, that they'd borrowed the synthesizer that they use from Stevie Wonder that they call Stevie Wonder and he lends them the synthesizer. I was like, wow, man. <laughs> so I fantasized about having this particular synthesizer that could communicate with aliens, you know, eight years old. <laughs> I think probably the tones of the instruments. Um, I, uh, I, when I was a child, I always thought it was just synthesizers, but it's not. It's a, an, a, probably a cor anglais and a tuba plus a synthesizer doing the two melodies. Um, and <laughs> I don't know why those, those particular sounds have always stuck with me since I was a child. The, the, the relatively simple, but the tuba has this, it's only one instrument, but they, they make it sound so immense. Um, and the way that John Williams composes this piece is super modern as well. Can you tell us why? It's Melodically, um, well, I'm, I, I have no idea how he went about composing it, but um, the idea of one pattern being repeated and then being changed and repeated and changed and then repeated and then changed and repeated is happening a lot now in music. Um, it's, you know, obviously that, that started back with uh, Steve Reich and uh, people like that, but um, I don't know. I, I've, Feel, I, I didn't realize until I was watching it then, that's when, it, when the, the main pulse starts and the point where the, um, the woman is getting all emotional and everything moves up a tone. Um, it feels really like a very contemporary piece of music. With John Williams? Yeah. Huh. No, don't, no preoccuparti. It's, it's important for me to learn Italian this way. <laughs> it's a bit insane. Two languages at once. <laughs> but it's kind of like, okay, I have two brains now. Male and female. I was? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, okay, my relationship to John Williams. No, I... I to be honest, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm allowed to be honest. Yeah. I'm not a massive have fan of John Williams, except for this. That's nice. Sorry. But, I, but then, uh, to be fair, I don't. This is my ignorance coming out because I don't really know much about what. What I, I feel, in a way, sometimes happens with um, very successful soundtrack makers is they just get copied so much that when you go back to the original work, you don't appreciate it for what it is. And so much uh, Hollywood blockbuster stuff just seems to pick a color that's John Williams' color and just do that, you know. So if there's a dynamic scene that's not actually that good, they'll put something really John Williams-y underneath with loads of dynamics to make it exciting when in fact it is not. You know, like, oh, there's an explosion sequence, so they put some really John Williams-esque music underneath. So it's, he's a victim of his own success to me, so I don't, I never, I understood him the wrong way around, so I, mia colpa. <laughs>